Welcome back to some more Corpio Revision. Today we're going to take a look at linear transformations. Now, this only pops up in the Corpio 1 book, but with it being an AS topic, it can be included on the A2 material, okay? So you need to know it anyway. So what we're going to do, we've picked out some questions from the Corpio 1 book, and I've picked out a question from the old exam board as well. So just a mix of questions, let's take a look at what we've got. So the first question is from exercise 7b, question A. We're given this matrix here, matrix A, which is 0, 1, 1, 0. And we're asked to describe fully the transformation represented by this matrix A. Well, this is quite a nice easy one. Um, I'm just going to pen. We've got the matrix A, so let's just write this down. So A, 0, 1, 1, 0. Now, some people just actually memorize these, um, but you don't have to. So if you don't want to actually memorize it, what I'd do is compare the identity matrix to it. So. 1, 0, 0, 1. Well, take these as points, right? So imagine 1, 0 maps to 0, 1. So 1 x unit maps to 1 y unit. So that kind of gives an idea of where this is going. And let's consider it again. 0, 1 maps to 1, 0, right? So 1, 0. So 1 y unit maps to one x unit so this is just simply a reflection so this is a reflection and hopefully it's clear what this reflection is it's a reflection in the line y equals x okay so like you see one x unit maps to one y unit and similar one y unit maps to one x unit okay and that's it we've described it fully it's just a reflection in the line y equals x. And then for part b, we're asked to write down a to the power of 50. Now let's just let's just be very clear for this chapter, you need to be very confident with matrices, it's a big component of this, this chapter. Now, at Excel, don't ex expect you to sit down and you know work this out by hand. You can either use your calculator or spot the pattern. Now, the pattern is when this is an even power for the index, when it's even, what you actually get is you end up with just one zero zero one. So you end up with the identity matrix. So one zero zero one. Now you can verify this on your graphical calculator. So verify using your graphical calculator. And if you don't have a graphical calculator, um, you you need one. Verify using graphical calculator. You can get away with not having one, but for your A-level maths, I would just recommend it. So verify using graphical calculator. Now, so this is a to the two n is equal to one zero zero one. Okay, so a to the power of an even number will just give you the identity matrix. Okay, so a to the fifty is just the identity. So that's that first question. Nice easy introduction there just to get us started. Let's take a look at something else now. So we've got a question from the review exercise two. Question eighteen. We're given a triangle T of area eighteen centimeters squared and it's transformed into the triangle T prime by this matrix A. Now A is in terms of K so the first part is asked us to find the determinant of A in terms of K. So again, this is why I'm saying you need to be confident with matrices. If you're on track to work at the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix, go and check out my previous video on matrices. But if not, this should hopefully be nice and easy. So the determinant of A, remember we just do K times 2K, so that'd be 2K squared. So that's nice and easy so far. Then I need to look at this minus 3 times k minus 1, but remember we do k times 2k, so 2k squared, minus, minus 3 times k minus 1, so that'd be plus 3 times k minus 1, so this is plus 3 lots of k minus 1, so if we simplify this, this will be 2k squared plus 3k minus 3, okay, so that's my determinant of a in terms of k, so that's the first 3 marks, it's quite a generous 3 marks there. Part b, then tells us that the area of T prime, so that's the transformed triangle, is 198 centimetres squared. So let's just write this down. So the area of T is 18 centimetres squared. T prime is um, 198 centimetres squared. And it asks us to just find the possible values, okay? Now the thing you've got to be aware of with this question, remember, the determinant gives us a scale factor, okay? so. If you know the scale factor, you can times the area here by the scale factor, and it will give you this one here. 
So how do we get that scale factor? Well, all I'm going to do is divide the new area by the old area. So if we do that here, that'll be 198 divided by 18. Do it by hand, or do it on your calculator, and what you'll get here is the scale factor is 11. So this is my scale factor. So what, that, what we know now is that the determinant of A, therefore the determinant of A is equal to 11, but this is the determinant of A. So all we need to do is set this equal to 11. So 2k squared plus 3k minus 3 is equal to 11. So check your 11 off. So I'm going to end up now with 2k squared plus 3k minus 14, and this is equal to 0. And all I've got to do now is just simply factorise this. So you factorise this, what you'll get is 2k um, plus 7, and then I'll also get k minus 2. Okay, this is equal to 0. So to work out my k values now, remember we just set these equal to 0, so therefore k is 2, or k would be minus 7 over 2. Okay. And there's no restriction, it doesn't have to be positive or anything, so we can have both values there. And like it says, find the possible values. So that's kind of a big clue. If it says find the possible values of k, remember you're probably going to end up with a quadratic. That's kind of the big clue for that. So possible values, possible values implies a quadratic. Okay. So there we have it. So then there are two possible values for k. We can have k is 2 or minus 7 over 2. So that's that question done there. Let's take a look at the next one. Now the next question is a question from the old exam board. Uh, oh, sorry, the old exam spec. So this was from the FP1 June 2009 paper. Question 5. The first part involves multiplying matrices. Now this one you can't do with your calculator. So we need to do it by hand. So let's have a look at this. So we're given the matrix R, which is A, 2, A and B. And we have to find R squared in terms of A and B. So R squared, that's going to be A to A, B, times by itself again. So A to A and B. So remember now, this will give me, because this is a squared matrix here, 2 by 2, and then multiplied by 2 by 2 again, my result will be a 2 by 2 matrix. So to get this element here in the top left, I need to do this row by this column. So A times A. A squared, 2 times A, you get plus 2A. Okay, so that's my top left element. To get this top right, I need to do this row here by this column here. So that'll be 2A, 2A by uh, plus 2B there. So it's A times 2 and then 2 times B. So 2A plus 2B. Bottom left now, this row with this column. So A times A, I'm going to get A squared, and then B times A, so plus a, B. And then we're nearly there again, this row with this column for my last element. So 2A plus B squared. So that's R squared though in terms of A and B. So hopefully that's not too bad, um, relatively straightforward. But we need to use this R squared now because we're told that R squared represents an enlargement with center 0, 0 and scale factor 15. So how do we know what that matrix looks like? Well, R squared, if it represents an enlargement with center 0, 0 and scale factor 15, this is a nice easy one, which hopefully you can just remember off the top of your head. That'll just be 15, 15, and these elements here will be 0. Okay? So that's an enlargement with center 0, 0, and then a scale factor of 15. Again, you can compare it with the identity matrix. If, you want, if you've got a scale factor of 15, you've just got times 1 by 15, and then 1 by 15 again here. So, both of these are R squared, so all I've got to do is equate this here, this top left element, with this, because we know it's equal to 15. And then using that, I'll get a value for A, and I can simply just work out B using any of the other three. So, A squared plus 2A is going to be equal to 15. So now we can solve this, it's just going to give us a nice quadratic again. So A squared plus 2A minus 15. It's equal to zero, and this will factorise. So you're going to get a um, plus five times a minus three. Okay, this is equal to zero. Now, 
the difference here is we're only finding an a value of a but like we we're just saying when it says values we normally get a quadratic now we have a quadratic but it only wants a value so there's going to be a, rest a restriction here a restraint and that's the fact that a is positive a has to be bigger than zero okay so therefore a can't be minus five as a is bigger than zero so a is positive so therefore a has to be free okay so that's the value for a now you can get b by equating it to any of the others but the easiest one would just be either this one here or this one um, but i'd definitely just do this one here okay you can use this one here but the issue is you're going to get b squared is equal to nine if you set it up like that now the difference here is that would give you two b values b would either be three or minus three but clearly like we can see here now, if I put 2a plus 2b is equal to 0, well that's 6 plus 2b is equal to 0, so therefore 2b is equal to minus 6, and therefore b has to just be minus 3. It can't be positive 3 as well, so therefore a is 3 and b is minus 3. Okay, so there we have it, so that's the value of a and the value of b for 5 marks there. So let's take a, look, take a look at the next question. Um, just a couple more questions now. We have this question here. Exercise 7, F question 5. So we're given a matrix, and hopefully this one jumps out at you straight away because it's very similar to the last one we've just done. So part A, the transformation. So again, because it's just two numbers, so 4, 0, 0, 4. This again is an enlargement. The scale factor is just the size of the numbers here. So because it's four, it's an enlargement with scale factor. Oops, scale factor four. And don't forget to men mention that the center is zero, zero. Okay. So that's the transformation there. Part B just asks you to use your calculator. So you can use your calculator. You can actually do it by hand, but you're not going to get extra marks for doing it by hand. Um, but if you don't have a calculator, that'll do it. You're going to have to do it by hand anyway. But simply, what you'll get for the inverse of E will just be a quarter, zero, zero, and a quarter. Okay. So now, for part C, we have to use our answer to part B to help us. So what we're given is we're given a triangle T. And we're told that it's transformed using this matrix E that we started with up here. And it gives us some new coordinates. And the coordinates of this new, these, the new triangle sorry, is 4, 6, 9, 7 and 3, 1. So we just have to use our answer to part B to find the coordinates of these vertices of T. So, how do we do this? Well, to do this, using this inverse here, it's really, really easy. All you've got to consider is your inverse, so 1 over 4, 0, 0, 1 over 4, and then times it by each individual coordinate here. So if I do this by the first one, 4, 6, multiply this out, you can do it by hand or by your calculator, and what you'll actually get here is that this coordinate is 1 and 3 over 2. So that's my first coordinate. My next one, again, take the same matrix, your inverse, and then times it by the next coordinate for the triangle. So 9 and 7. Again, do it on your calculator by hand. And what you'll get for this one is 9 over 4 and 7 over 4. And then finally, do it for the last one. Uh, but I've kind of run out of room. So what I'm going to do is just rub out this bit at the top. So get rid of all this. I should have just about enough room. So we just finish it up off here at the top. Again, take your inverse matrix and then times it by your last coordinate, which is 3 and 1. Do it on your calculator. Or by hand, 3 over 4 and then 1 over 4. And like you can see, what's actually just happening is you're dividing each coordinate by 4. 3 divided by 4, 3 quarters. 1 divided by 4, a quarter. 9 divided by 4, 9 over 4. 7 divided by 4, 7 over 4. So that's how you can tell what's happening. Because like we said here, it's, just, it's an enlargement with a scale factor of 4. So, them are all my um, coordinates there for the 
coordinates of the vertices of t. So if we write them out in full, so therefore t is going to be equal to 1, 3 over 2. My next one is 3 over 4. Was it 9 over 4? 9 over 4. 7 over 4. And then finally, we had 3 over 4 and 1 over 4. Okay, so then are the coordinates there for the vertices of t. So far, that question is nice and easy. The very final question here, again, we're just looking at the determinant and how we use that as a like, scale factor. So part A just wants us to find the product here of AB. So question 7. So again, you can either do this by hand or just do it on uh, your calculator. It do honestly doesn't matter, unless he asks you to show the working. Um, so P is equal to minus 1, 0, 0, 1 times B, which is 4, 0, 0, 3. So if you do this matrix multiplication here, this will be minus 1 times 4. 0 times plus, 0 times 0, so that's just going to be minus 4 in the top left. Minus 1 times 0, and then 0 times 3, so that has to be 0. 0 times 4, so that's 0. Plus 1 times 0, so that's 0 as well. And then finally, 0 times 0, so 0. And then 1 times 3, we get 3 there. Okay, so that's the matrix P there. And then finally, for part B, we're given that the area of T prime is 60. So that's my new transform triangle. So area of t, so t prime equal to 60. And we've got this matrix here, P. And it, this is the transformation. So this is the transformation to get us from the triangle T to T prime. So what I'm going to have to do here is work out the determinant of P to give my scale factor. And then I need to divide my new area by that scale factor to get my original area. So the determinant of P is going to be minus 4 times 3 minus 0 times 0. So it's going to be minus 4 times 3, which is minus 12. Now, don't worry about the fact that it's minus 12. When you divide to get your scale factor, take it as the absolute. So it's going to be 12 in this case. So therefore, the area will be my original, uh, my my new area, so 60, divided by my scale factor, so 12, 60 divided by 12 is just 5, okay, so the area of T, is equal to 5 there, so hopefully that's not too bad, um, but that wraps up this video today, so quite a quick one, um, but hopefully it's been okay. If there's any topics you'd like me to try and cover before the exams, please leave a, qu um, just a, a comment down below. I'll try my best to get to it. Um, any queries, anything like that, just leave them below. I'll try my best to get to them. Cheers, guys.